Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Asper Control in Standard, a blue, black and white control deck, although it's mostly a blue and black control deck, just splashing white, so you won't see any double white spells like Settle the Wreckage or Cleansing Nova in the list. And as you can see, the deck is very light on win conditions. It's basically just a pile of counter spells, removal spells, and card draw engines. And the main win conditions being four copies of Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. And the first order of business with Teferi is usually to get to eight loyalty, at which point we can use the minus eight ultimate ability, which gives us an emblem that says whenever we draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent controls, which will very quickly get rid of the opponent's entire board state, at which point we can kind of win the game however we want. We can even win the game with Teferi himself since we can use the minus three ability on Teferi and that way we can put Teferi back into our deck which will ensure that the opponent is gonna deck themselves and draw from an empty library before we do and that way we can win the game but we can also win the game the old-fashioned way by attacking for damage which is where Chromium the Mutable comes in seven mana for a 7-7 seven, seven legendary dragon with flash and flying cannot be countered and we can also protect Chromium by discarding a card turning it into a 1-1 creature with hexproof that cannot be blocked until end of turn so has kind of built-in protection from removal spells. So those are the win conditions. Let's take a look at the entire deck list here. So as I've mentioned, we've got a lot of counter spells. We've got one copy of Disdainful Stroke, which counters target spell with converted mana cost four or greater. We have two copies of Essence Scatter to counter creature spells. We've got the full four copies of Sinister Sabotage, which counters any spell and also lets us surveil one which also is very useful in any control deck, giving us that extra card selection, or putting cards in the graveyard can be useful with Search for Ascanta, as we'll get to in a second. And then we also have three copies of Syncopate as another flexible counterspell that also exiles the countered card. Then moving on, we've got a bit of removal as well. We've got two copies of Cast Down, which destroys target a non-legendary creature. So there's a few creatures this doesn't kill, like Galta, for example. Uh, but for the most part, Cast Down is a solid two-mana removal spell. And we also have three copies of Moment of Craving as an instant that gives a creature minus two, minus two until of turn and also gains two life. So it shines against the more aggressive decks where gaining a bit of life can be very useful. And we're also running the full four copies of Raska's Contempt, which can exile target creature or planeswalker. And we also gain two life. And then we also have three copies of Ritual of Soot as a powerful sweeper effect, destroying all creatures with convert mana cost three or less. So also shines against the token decks. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we have a bit of card draw as well. Two copies of Search for Ascanta, which is a legendary enchantment that can transform into the Sunken Ruin after we get a bit of card selection from it. And then uh, the Sunken Ruin, of course, can draw us a ton of extra cards with the activated ability. And then we also have four copies of Chemister's Insight to draw two cards at instant speed and also as a jump start, so we can get rid of useless cards out of our hand to draw two more. And uh, I think that uh, covers the entire main deck. Quickly going over the mana base, we've got a pretty straightforward mana base here, lots of dual lands, we've got four watery graves counting as both island and swamp, which can come into play untapped if we pay two life, four catacombs which come into play untapped if we control an island or a swamp, which also includes watery grave being both an island and a swamp, and same can be said for isolated chapel if we control watery grave, chapel will come into play untapped, same goes for glacial fortress, and then we've got a bunch of basic lands, four swamps, four islands and just one basic plains. And then we also have two copies of Field of Ruin, which can destroy opposing non-basic lands, so it can help us find opposing transformed search for Ascantas, for example. Then taking a look at the sideboard, we've got three copies of Duress against control decks, two copies of Fungal Infection as more cheap interaction against the low-to-the-ground aggressive decks, as this can potentially take out a one-toughness creature and make a 1-1 one -one blocker just for one mana. I'm also playing one Honor Guard, which shines against the Golgari midrange decks that have a lot of creatures with enter battlefield abilities. We've got an additional Disdainful Stroke to counter expensive stuff, two negates against non-creature spells, an additional Moment of Craving against aggro decks, two copies of Invoke the Divine to destroy artifacts and enchantments also gains us a bit of life, so it can also come in against the red decks that are playing Experimental Frenzy, which is a pretty important card for us to deal with. We've got an Eldest Reborn, which is also a nice value card against the slower matchups. Maybe also can bring it in against other control decks, since it also makes them sacrifice a Planeswalker with the first ability. And then two copies of Vona, Butcher of Magan, which is also just a versatile answer that can gain a bit of life, or potentially destroy opposing non-land permanents that we care about. 
So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. And we're playing a best of three here with Esper Control. Alright, we're on the play. Don't think we can keep a six lander even though Search for a Scunt does a great card. Uh, yeah, just need more interaction here. Alright, this is a bit better. And yeah, we'll still keep Search on top, I think. Definitely low on interaction this game. Only single sabotage. But the card draw and selection from Ascant and Teferi can make up a lot of mistakes. Opponent seems to be on a Golgari deck. Don't need more lands. I'm sure we'll find land 5 for Teferi eventually. Don't want to keep lands on top and then draw more lands. Opponent's not doing much early. I'm happy with the uh, syncopates. Their opponent not playing anything early, definitely playing to our advantage. And a Chupacabra, that's fine. Can mo use Moment of Craving on it if we want to. I probably will end of turn, that way if we draw lands we can still go to Ferry and keep up Syncopate for one. Don't think we need a cast down. Alright, found a land. Just gonna jam the ferry here. And, we need to move quickly. and as the scatter's perfect too. So we've got answers to a lot of things. Four mana Vraska could definitely slip through the cracks here. But our opponent's just gonna pack it in. Alright then, that was a quick game one versus Golgari. Let's see how we want to sideboard in this matchup. So, this Daneful Stroke seems like a good one. Fona, assuming our opponent takes out Ravenous Chupacabras, is pretty decent as well. And of course, the Honor Guard is in our sideboard for this specific matchup. And anything else? Don't think we need anything else. And what are we taking out? A few copies of Moment of Craving can probably go. Don't know if we want to keep two or one. Uh, Ritual of Soot is not amazing in this matchup, but it is still a catch-up mechanism to clean the board. So that's also one that I'm not sure if we want two or three copies after sideboard. And I don't think we need Chromium, especially once we bring in Vona as a way to deal with problematic permanence. So a few cards we still need to cut. I think I'll just cut one Moment of Craving. And maybe on the draw we want to keep all the Ritual of Soots, but on the play we can take one out. So on the draw we might want to cut like one Chemister's Inside maybe, seems reasonable. And then on the play, for game 3 if there's one, we'll uh, cut a Ritual and maybe add back a Chemister's Inside. Since usually Ritual Soot is better on the draw, when you give the opponent a chance to draw and play one more creature on turn 4 that dies to it. So we're on the draw and this hand seems okay. Turn on Lanor Elves, so your opponent is on the Lanor Elves build, which could definitely be scary in this spot when we're on the draw. And our opponent could potentially play a uh, non-creature spell before we have the relevant interaction. We do have a Syncopate here, which is going to be pretty huge as well. And eventually Ritual can clean up the Lanor Elves. Fine Broker with no value. I mean, it is still... A 3-4, which we have to respect. So we could definitely Asa Scatter it. So I don't mind Asa Scattering, could also Syncopate so it doesn't come back in the future with Find Finality. Um, but we kind of want to keep Syncopate for a Planeswalker next turn, potentially. So this is a tricky spot. I think I'm going to Asa Scatter. Just because our Ritual of Soot doesn't deal with the Find Broker very well. So now we've got Syncopate for 2 up which can potentially counter something like a Vivian instead of points attacking with Elves. Alright. So now we can end of turn Chemisters inside if our opponent doesn't make us use the Syncopate. And another Fine Broker, which can of course get back the other Fine Broker. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna Syncopate it. This does mean that we might have to take uh, planeswalker activation before we can contempt it. But I'm guessing that one planeswalker activation in general 
it's going to be worth less than a fine broker in hand. And the ferry's a nice pickup here. So I'm just going to jam it. Don't have any relevant to man interaction to keep up afterwards. I know. I was that thought. But playing the ferry on a mostly empty board is always worth it. So let's see if they have a Vraska here. Lan are also attacking the ferry, so they don't have a clean answer to to ferry. Ooh, they do. Eldest reborn. Yeah, that's a good one. Definitely punishing us for tapping out for the ferry now. But we picked up another to ferry. Well, things are getting interesting here. So eldest reborn combines pretty well with Golgari fine broker, since they can eventually get back fine broker, which then gets back eldest reborn. Of course, they could just get back or to ferry as well. I think we just play another Teferian plus. Since minusing on the Elsterborn here doesn't seem great when the Lunar Elves can finish off the ferry. And just hope they don't have a second copy, otherwise we're definitely in trouble. That helps. So now we've got sabotage up. We're gonna discard probably a ritual of suit. Our point hasn't been playing many cheap creatures this game. And the land could still be important. And Vraska seems worthy of a sabotage here, even though we have the Contempt, but Contempt can also answer whatever they get back with the Elsterborn. Another sabotage on top is perfect. All right, so our plan now, I think, will be to minus the ferry on the Elsterborn. That way they don't get any value from the third chapter. And then we can potentially kill the Lanor Elves with the Vraska's Contempt. And we'll pay the two life here to keep up sabotage as well. Alright, so we've got most things covered now. Contempt Elves. Sabotage in hand for their next powerful play. Ideally we keep sabotage for the Elves Reborn that they're gonna draw in two turns. All right, another Contempt and Teferi is good. And then untap two lands. And I'm feeling pretty good about things here. Opponent just saying go. So we can either jumpstart or just cast out of hand. I think we cast out of hand since there's nothing I really want to discard with jumpstart. It does open up a potential removal spell on Teferi at instant speed. But the Golgari decks don't play a ton of Raskus Contempts to begin with. No time for a break. Right, let's play Vona. Keep up Sinister Sabotage for Elsterborn. And Vona can take over the game as well. Duress. Alright, so they set up Duress plus Elsterborn here. So, I'm guessing we let this resolve. They're gonna take the sabotage. But if they somehow don't, then we just have sabotage at the ready. And I don't think them seeing our hands matters all that much. And the air opponent's just gonna concede. Since, of course, if our opponent plays Aldous Reborn, we can choose to just sacrifice the fairy. Vona can destroy Aldous Reborn. We play another to fairy and uh, win the game from there. Alright, sweet, so got to see the deck in action against Golgari midrange. Pretty quick game one, opponent conceded pretty early. The Eldest Reborn in game two was pretty sketchy, but uh, we were able to fight through it with a timely top deck to ferry. And uh, yeah, there you go, on to the next one. And looking at our hand, it looks okay. We've got some uh, early interaction, contempt to maybe get rid of a creature that survived. And we'll just play an island for now. That way our dual lands come into play untapped. Opponent on green-white tokens, so the Ritual of Soot is going to be very important here. 
So we'll have to see if we need to pull the trigger early on Asa Scatter or not. Opponent with an Arch of Aska, which can potentially draw them some cards. And our opponent is just fully committing here, playing the Hisra Banalia. So they are saying, if you have a Ritual of Soot, then you have it. Otherwise, you're pretty dead. And uh, yeah, it's definitely true. If we didn't have the Ritual, we would be pretty dead. But we do have the Ritual, so we'll play land 3, keep up Sabotage, take our beating, and then hope to wipe the board with Ritual. And our opponent might not commit anything else to the board here, since they know that Ritual might be incoming. But we are definitely forced to cast a Ritual here, otherwise we're gonna fall too far behind. So that uh, cleans up the board. And now we just have to deal with whatever else our opponent has in hand. Which is still gonna be challenging here, as they have another Emara, Which can kind of win the game by itself, in a way. Alright, so... I think we're okay playing a Search for Ascanta, still keeps up our Sinister Sabotage. And then maybe next turn we'll Contempt Emara if they don't play anything else. It's gonna be two mana for a Thorn Lieutenant. I guess we can uh, Assassin Scatter that one. Token's deck doesn't have a ton of creatures otherwise. And do they have anything else? Nope. Alright. Definitely want the uh, Ascanta in our graveyard here, and Moment of Craving is an excellent answer here, since it doesn't force us to pay for mana for Contempt, still gets rid of Amara. And I think we do that now before the opponent gets a chance to maybe tap Amara for Convoke. And then we can kind of ride our Search for Ascanta to victory here. Two counter spells and Contempt in hand, so I'm not too worried about a 1 1 token at the moment. Can afford to take a bit of damage from it. Just have to watch out for some instant speed shenanigans like March of the Multitudes making some tokens at instant speed. Sapling Migration looks innocent, but is actually a pretty powerful enabler for Convoke. So I definitely want to counter it. Question is, do we syncopate or sabotage? We've got four cards in our graveyard, so if we sabotage and put one card in our graveyard with Surveil, we could already flip Ascanta, so I think we sabotage here. And another Sabotage is interesting. Um, I wouldn't mind another Sabotage, but I think I put it in the graveyard just because flipping Ascanta is such a big deal. So now we have six cards in our graveyard. Ascanta can put a seventh one in, and we'll get a transformed Ascanta. Alright, not a is too bad. And a Chemister's Insight can definitely also go in the graveyard. And we'll transform Ascanta. Alright, so... Could just main phase Frasca's Contempt Amara. I don't mind it. So let's just Contempt Amara. Again, before the opponent gets a chance to untap with it. Take two. Plus, this way, if our opponent doesn't force us to syncopate, we can activate Ascanta or jumpstart inside, probably just activating Ascanta though. So we'll see what they do here. Venerated Loxodon. Yeah, that's worthy of a syncopate here. Adds a lot of power and toughness to the board. Alright, and Teferi was an excellent draw here. So now we can play Teferi plus Untap Ascanta and get that party started. And Moment of Craving is good too. So now we're going to get ahead on cards very quickly. And the opponent has to come up with uh, the answers. They could have a Conclave Tribunal in hand to get rid of Teferi. Instead it's a District Guide, that's fine. I guess they can go Guide into Land into Tribunal here. Yep, 
So I could have prevented this by casting the Moment of Craving in response to the District Guide trigger. Was probably worth it, but eh, now we get to activate Ascanta and maybe find another Teferi. I'm not too upset. And yep, there's another Teferi, seems good. Essence Scatter as well, so let's just do the same. See what we draw. Ooh, Ritual of Soot, so I was going to Moment of Craving the District Guide. Yeah, I think I still do. Let's just do it now. Again, so they don't get the extra creature for Convoke. Untap two lands. Could have also considered untapping Field of Rune since eventually we want to get rid of the Arch. That's probably better here. Alright, it's uh, plus. So opponent might be setting up a big March of the Multitude since they didn't attack with the token. Um, so they can march for 4 here, which still doesn't kill the Fairy, which is important. And uh, there's not much we can do about it other than maybe use Ascanta to find a counterspell. So we're just gonna pass the turn. And yep, there's a march. So let's use Ascanta. And Syncopate will do. So, do we consider using Field of Ruin now? Or do we keep up Essence Scatter for maybe another Loxodon? I think we keep up Essence Scatter for now. And end of turn we will probably Field of Ruin if they don't make us use Essence Scatter here. Alright, well, good thing we kept up Essence Scatter. So we're just countering everything the opponent does and getting ahead on cards now with the Fairy and Search. So it's plus first. Hurry. And use a Skanta main phase so we can untap it with the Fairy. Well, that's a miss. It's okay. And uh, yeah, I think I'll play the island here. Untap our lands. Opponent is currently at 8 permanents for the city's blessing. Soldier token attacks, that's fine. No more games. And a Shalai, that's fine too. So we can contempt Shalai and then still use Ascanta, which is more important than uh, using the Field of Rune here. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, so we get to go to game 2 here against Selesnya tokens. So what is the Selesnya deck going to bring in after sideboard is a question. They might bring in some uh, difficult to deal with permanents, maybe more planeswalkers. Like our opponent does have a lot of non-creature spells that are worth uh, getting rid of with cards like Negate or Duress, but on the other hand they also have a pretty high density of creatures. I think I like Vona since that's a pretty versatile answer. Can get rid of problematic cards and a 4 4 lifelinker is pretty nice too. Ritual of Soot, of course, is great. I uh, don't think we need Chromium in this matchup, especially after we bring in Vonas. Cast Down is not great since it doesn't kill Amara, so I think we can cut that one. Also, doesn't kill Trostani. I like most of our other cards. Contempt, maybe one copy can go since it's a bit s slow in the matchup, and then we can make room for maybe another uh, Moment of Craving or a Fungal Infection. I think I like Moment, can get rid of Night Tokens, and then I think I'll bring in one extra Disdainful Stroke, as it can counter both Trostani and the Big March of the Multitudes. And yeah, I think that's it. Could also consider Invoke the Divine. And I don't think we can keep a One Lander here. So let's go to six. This is better. Don't need a second to ferry here, just need lands. Bond with a flower on turn one. Getting a forest. Alright, search on turn two is pretty powerful too. Uh, 
no turn to play. So we could tap out for Ascanta. The problem here is that Stroke doesn't counter History of Banalia, which is the scariest card the opponent can have. Neither does Asa Scatter. And they didn't play a turn two creature, so either they have like a district guide on turn three or a history. If they have a district guide, keeping up Asa Scatter could be worthwhile, but I think it's probably worth it to tap out for search here, given that most of their turn three plays we're not going to be able to interact with. And yep, there's a history. Do have a moment of craving to get rid of one of the night tokens, which will save us some damage. Can't really afford to keep a card we cannot cast on top here. Alright, Watery Graves, okay, so we can play Tapped Watery Grave and then keep up Stroke and Asa Scatter. We'll probably have to take two from the Knight in order to keep up our counter spells, and then end of turn we can Moment of Craving the token to get rid of it if we didn't have to use one of our counter spells. So we're gonna take two. If our opponent tries to convoke a Loxodon, we can Asa Scatter it. And yep. And I think I like Asa Scatter more than Stroke here, since Stroke's a bit more versatile. And our opponent didn't play a turn two creature, so they might not have any cheap ones. But yeah, we're definitely in trouble here. Contempt is interesting. I think we keep it. It's not great, but... And now we want a moment of craving the token and still be able to keep up Disdainful Stroke. So we're gonna take four from Knight. But we've got their next big play covered at least. And Vivian, yep, definitely wanna counter that one. And Vona seems good. How close are we to flipping our search? Not all that close. So I think Vona is the kind of card we're gonna need here. But of course we can't cast it right now, and we're also holding a Teferi at 5 mana. Hmm, this is tricky. For a point as Conclave Tribunal, they might also use it on Ascanta or on Teferi. I think we keep this. And then just hope to survive one turn here with Contempt, and then hope to find a land next turn. But this could definitely be bad. So again, I'm going to take two, since Contempt might have to deal with something scarier, like another Planeswalker. And our point just says go. So they might be setting up a March of the Multitudes. So do we Contempt a 2-2 token or not? If we Contempt, that's card 5 going to the graveyard, so Ascanta still doesn't transform necessarily. The token isn't relevant if we play Vona here, unless they've got a Conclave Tribunal. So I think we untap. And hope to find a land, that's good enough. And then just play Vona, I think, over Teferi, since Vona holds the ground better. If her opponent does have Tribunal for Vona, then Teferi can minus to free Vona once again. I think that's okay. And we're just gonna hope that Vona can hold the fort for a while. And yep, there's a march for four. Opponent takes two from Temple Garden, and a Dawn of Hope. Yeah, Vona can deal with that as well. So Dawn of Hope, definitely a reason to maybe bring in Invoke the Divine as well. Opponent's attacking with everyone. Don't think there's any trick we need to play around. Killing a Lifelinker is nice, because then our opponent gets last value from Dawn of Hope. But they're going to be drawing two cards here no matter what, since every instance of Lifelink triggers a Dawn of Hope. So I think I would just want to get rid of the 2-2 two, two Vigilance token for now. Don't think there's a plus 2, plus 2 effect we need to keep in mind. So our opponent gets to draw two cards here if they want. But then Vona can destroy the Dawn of Hope. And we get to play Teferi, or we can just use Teferi to get rid of the Dawn of Hope. Could also work. And do we want a Glacial Fortress? Not really. I want to try and flip Search for Ascanta here. Alright. 
So let's quickly go to full control so we can attack with Vona and then still use her on the Dawn of Hope. And then we're totally fine playing Teferi here. It's gonna get attacked by the tokens. We could even consider minusing with Teferi on a token to survive a Flower Flourish, dealing uh, additional damage, since 3 tokens plus 2 plus 2 is only 9 damage, whereas 4 tokens is 12. I think I still plus here, since if we minus we are giving up a lot of value, which I don't think we can afford to right now. But we're definitely in a spot where we could easily die. Keep up the pace. Right, not a search doesn't help. Alright, let's see if they've got a Flourish here. They've got an Arch of Raska instead, which we can deal with with our Field of Ruin end of turn. And yep, they do have the Flourish. That's too bad. Well, we knew the risk we were getting into here. So could have uh, played around it, but... I think this gave us the best chance overall. Alright, so after seeing... Dawn of Hope, do we reconsider maybe Invoke the Divine? Still a pretty narrow card. Does deal with Tribunal and Dawn of Hope. Um, also deals with History of Banalia, but it's not the perfect answer to it necessarily. We did also see Vivian from the opponent, which means Contempt still has some added value, more than just a creature removal spell. Vona seemed great. Yeah, we don't have a lot of answers to a Dawn of Hope. So maybe an Invoke over a Contempt is reasonable. Maybe we can cut an Insight for a second one. Something like this is probably acceptable. Fungal Infection might seem good, but I don't think it's impactful enough. Yeah, I think this setup is okay. And how about this hand? On the plate, not great. Two lands could easily miss our land drops and die, but we do have some good early answers with Asa Scatter and Stroke. So I think we still keep. But there's definitely a fail rate here if we don't find mana soon, especially if we don't find blue mana soon. All right, Syncopate gives us another early counterspell. If they play a 2-drop, I'm tempted to Syncopate since we're light on mana here. So I want to keep the Asa Scatter for later. The reason not to use Syncopate is that if they play a turn 3 History Banalia, uh, Syncopate can potentially still catch it, whereas Stroke and Asa Scatter cannot. Luckily we drew the blue source here, so now we can Sabotage, so it works out. And yeah, they did have the history, so maybe should have actually considered using Asa Scatter last turn to be able to syncopate here, but Sabotage works out. And we just want lands here, so I'll keep a Watery Grave. And I think I'll pay 2 life to be able to Insight, even though there's a realistic chance we're just going to have to use something else this turn. We're definitely signaling to the opponent that we have an Insight in hand, so they're kind of incentivize to play something powerful that we are going to have to use a counterspell for so that we can draw two. But our opponent's just passing the turn, so that's excellent for us. Get to get ahead on cards, untap and oof, the fairy is a good one too. Plays very well with our two counterspells we have in hand. All right, let's see what they've got. Amara. Um, I think we counter that since if we let this resolve and they go Amara into Conclave Tribunal, sure we can disable Stroke Tribunal, but if we just Asa Scatter Amara, they can't cast a Tribunal in the first place. So I think countering this is fine. All right, get to on tap, plus the ferry. No time for a break. 
Contempt is good too. So we could main phase Chemistry's Inside Jumpstart so we can make use of the untapped two lands here. Don't hate it since the only relevant spell we want to keep up is this Daneful Stroke anyway. So let's go for it. And then we can discard a Watery Grave. Play a land, untap, say go. And it is going to be Conclave Tribunal, which could sabotage, could stroke. I think at this point we have enough mana where the added flexibility of sabotage means that we should probably keep that one in hand. And I'll just use the stroke for now. Get to untap with the fairy, and each turn, of course, we get to untap with the fairy is a, a turn we get a ton of extra value and our opponent just packs it in here. All right, sweet, so managed to beat Selesnya tokens in three games, some pretty interesting games. Hopefully you kind of got to see the different things we had to try and play around. But uh, yeah, we got there in the end, so on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a one-lander, can't really keep this one, sadly. All right, this is a lot better. And hoping to find a land on top. Syncopate's tempting, but I think we just want to land. Play tapped watery grave, say go. And see what we're up against. Overgrown tomb, so the Golgari deck maybe. Our hand's not bad against Golgari. Can cast down the walker, which is definitely going to be an issue going further, so don't mind killing it. While we can. Syncope is actually nice too, since it exiles a creature that they maybe try and get back later with Find Finality. Lanor Elves is fine. Into another Walker. So we can counter X equals 1 with Syncope. Yeah, that's probably fine. Alright, triple Sabotage. So no real need to Moment of Craving the Lanor Elves here. That's fine. Militia Buglers, our opponent with a pretty creature-heavy deck here. Jade Light, I will counter. It's a little scarier, since Moment of Craving might not be able to answer it. So this is interesting. We kind of want to hit our land drops, but we also want to find action. But most of our action spells are cards like uh, Teferi, cards like uh, Chemistry's Insights, which we need land 4 for, so I think we keep it on top. Even though... Eventually we're gonna... have to find some action cards. So Bugler's definitely one we want to counter, since it's a built-in 2 for 1 most of the time. Ritual of Soot is a good one, since that can catch us back up if our opponent plays a bunch more creatures. So our game plan here is just to say go, keep Sabotage to counter cards we can deal with, like Planeswalkers, and then uh, keep Ritual to answer the board. So if they play a cheap creature here, instead of using Moment of Craving, we can just tap out for Ritual. Opponent does get then a window to maybe resolve a Planeswalker, and we will be shields down on Sabotage, but I think that's a risk we'll have to take. Instead, our opponent just says go. So in this case, opponent could be holding a March of the Multitudes, which is why they didn't attack with the Lanor Elves. Although, I guess then we can just Ritual, so maybe that's actually fine. Yeah, let's just Moment of Craving the Branch Walker. This doesn't force the opponent to use the March, of course, but now we get to untap. Say go. Opponent did nothing end of turn, so they just kind of wasted one mana with Elves. And they find, which we will counter. Even though Ritual of Suits technically deals with both of their creatures. And I think we keep Chapel on top, just so that we can cast the Fairy if we draw it. It's definitely sketchy, since if we draw a bunch more lands, then we could be in trouble. But we do want lands in general. Alright, so... We are in okay shape as long as our opponent doesn't play a Planeswalker here. If they just play some more creatures, we can probably deal with them for a while. And yep, that's a Planeswalker. 
And yep, sabotage a turn late. So the decision of keeping land on top there definitely didn't pay off. So let's just say go. Wait one more turn on Ritual. That's fine. Well, Teferi's a good one. So let's Ritual, and then Teferi can eventually answer Vraska. But is just gonna keep making pirates. And another Teferi, all right. Well, this is working out in the end. Teferi minuses on Vraska, pirates kills Teferi, we play another Teferi. So now the chapel on top is looking a lot better. Yeah, the only play I'm not sure about was using Sabotage on uh, Find, since we had the Rituals to deal with the creatures. But if they're getting back all those Explorer value creatures, then uh, Time for plan B. it's a little sketchy. Alright, well, Trophy on Teferi is actually totally fine. Just get an Island. Don't need more than one white source. Reverse. So Vraska's gone. And yep, we get to play Teferi, and now we get to keep up Sabotage when we untap two lands. Expecting Teferi to probably get killed as well, but... So if our opponent responds to the untap trigger, we won't be able to counter it. Play lands, untap. And yep, nothing, so we can keep Sabotage to answer Vraska, hopefully. Chupacabra's fine. All right, this is working out beautifully. I was looking sketchy for a second there, but the fairy saves the day. So now we can ritual to get rid of the pirates and keep up sabotage. The ferry falls to two. We need to move quickly. And I think I'm just gonna main phase inside here. Essa scatters okay. Let's just say go. So yeah, we eventually we'll need to answer the Chupacabra, but we've got plenty of answers to it, so I'm not too concerned. Land or Elves doesn't really matter here. So Chupacabra going after Teferi. I think we can inside in case we find a moment of craving here. Alright, just some more land, sadly. And what's the follow-up? Nothing. And more lands. Alright, well... If the ferry misses here, then we could be in trouble. Alright, there's a moment of craving, so now the ferry gets to survive at least. Still not holding a ton of action here, so we could definitely still be in trouble if our opponent finds uh, another planeswalker, for example. I guess we can moment right now. And then untap our lands. I don't think I want a ritual of suit on a single land or elves. Since I'm totally fine, Lander Elves attacking Teferi and us drawing a card every turn. Don't necessarily need to build up loyalty. Chupacabra, I'm actually gonna ask the scatter. I would much rather ask the scatter something like a Golgari Fine Broker, of course. But Chupacabra makes it so Teferi actually gets pressured. And our opponent's just gonna scoop it up. Well, if they could see our hands, maybe they wouldn't concede, but I'm not gonna complain. So I managed to sneak a win in here against Abs on midrange, so wide for Militia Bugler, apparently. So how do we want a sideboard? Opponent's going to be bringing in a ton of hate out of the sideboard. We can expect duresses, we can expect more answers to our Planeswalkers in general. 
Um, Vona is probably fine since I expect our opponent to take out Chupacabras, so I don't mind bringing in Vona. Eldest Reborn seems reasonable, can maybe get a Vraska from the opponent, and of course Honor Guard is uh, the reason why it's in the sideboard is for this type of matchup. And anything else? I guess the Stainful Stroke's reasonable too. And what are we taking out? Cast Down seems good enough. Craving seems okay. Maybe we can cut one moment of Craving. And I think we can cut Chromium when we bring in Vona. Yeah, not entirely sure what to cut here. Maybe we just don't need Eldest Reborn. We're making our curve a bit too high. And I'll cut one Chemister's Insight, because I don't know what else to cut. And maybe one of the cheap removal spells here. I guess Cast Down is slightly better in general. And this hand seems totally fine. Double Ascant a little awkward, but could be worse. If this was a six land hand with an Ascanta, I would snap keep. Yeah, I think keeping in all three rituals makes sense just as a way to catch back up. Especially once we cut a bit of the cheap removal. So they could land a scary turn to play here, like a Dawn of Hope or an Argol's Bloodfast, which we didn't actually bring in any answers for, except for Vona. Alright, turn to Walker, could also get out of hand, but that's why we kept in the cast downs over Moment of Craving. I think we want to keep up Asa Scatter instead of just jamming Search for Ascanta. It's a little awkward that we're missing double blue, so we're not guaranteed to be able to go Ascanta into Interactive Spell on turn 4. But I think we want to be able to keep up Asa Scatter here for a Jade Light Ranger, otherwise we would be in too much trouble facing a 3 power Wild Growth Walker and potentially a 4 power Ranger seems a bit too much to handle. So now I'll keep up Disdainful Stroke. And I guess we might as well play Field of Ruins if they don't force us to. We can just use Field of Ruin to get an extra blue source, so we can go Search plus Stroke. And maybe blow up their Temple Garden. Yeah, alright. Our opponent did keep in Chupacabra, so that's a little surprising. Yeah, I think we're fine with Chupacabra. Sure, it's a two-power creature, which we will eventually have to answer. Doesn't die to Ritual of Sits, it's a little annoying, but... I think this Daneful Stroke is going to have much more important things to counter. So let's get our islands. Bonan does have basic planes, makes sense. Alright, so now we can go Ascanta plus keep up the Daneful Stroke. And I wouldn't be too upset if our opponent kills our search for Ascanta since we've got a second one. Not too many ways your opponent can deal with it. Alright. Don't need an extra island. The fairy right on time. So that's a perfect draw here since now we still get to keep up with Stainful Stroke. Although I suspect the fairy is not going to be long for this world. Alright, it's on top. And nothing end of turn, that's good. Can counter Vraska here. Instead another Chupacabra. Might pull the trigger on Stroke, we've got a few draw steps to find another counter spell for a Planeswalker potentially. Yeah, definitely did not expect our opponent to still have Chupacabras after sideboard. And Adanto Vanguard, well, wouldn't be able to counter that one anyway, but Adanto Vanguards a lot more difficult for us to deal with, especially now that we took out most of our moments of craving. Asa Scatter comes a bit late, so that one can probably go. And a Ritual cleans up only the Wild Growth Walker here and forces the opponent to pay for life. Let's start by plussing. We do of course still have Rascal's Contempt to deal with the Vanguard. We can Ritual and then still Contempt the Vanguard. I think that's the plan here.
and their opponent will have a window to potentially resolve a Vraska. If they cast it main phase, then we'll know about it. If not, we uh, will just contempt the Vanguard to save the ferry. And yeah, just a Vanguard going after the ferry, so our opponent's pretty confident it's gonna work. But now we'll have a Teferi at 3 loyalty, which can potentially minus on Nebraska. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. Well, had some pretty timely top deck Teferis this game. But Asper Control prevails over Abzan midrange. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.